Hi, ASP viewers, bayonet collectors of all kinds. This is an introduction to Japanese bayonets. This is not an extensive collection of Japanese bayonets, but it'll give you an idea of what to look for should you ever decide to collect in this field. Um, there are numerous arsenals that make them. The most common I happen to have here. So we'll start out with the very early. Okay, the bayonet is known as a Type 30. It came out in 1897. And as late as 1945, it was still the standard bayonet of the Japanese army. The Japanese put a lot of faith in the blade, okay? They are a knife and sword culture, so they put a lot of effort into everybody knowing how to use the bayonet. And the bayonet was issued just about to everybody because it's a blade and it's part of their culture. So we're going to start off at this end here. You can see here that's Tokyo Bright Blade, and it has the quill on it. Now, the quillon is a device that was used in the Middle Ages in Europe. <clears throat> if you know how to use it, you can catch the blade of your opponent and twist it and snap it. It takes a hell of a lot of skill and training. Now, the British, who were in friendly relations with the Japanese prior to World War I, uh, liked the bayonet so much that they made their bayonet for the SMLE, the 1907, was really a copy of the Japanese Type 30. Before then, they had the Type 1903 bayonet, which is an excellent bayonet, more of a dagger, and someday we'll do a video on those. But eventually, they went to the Japanese version, and then later on, they found that the Quillon caused you more trouble than it was worth, particularly when it got hung up on barbed wire. All right, now, this is the Bright Blade. The early ones were Bright Blade, Quillon. Uh, later on, different manufacturer, you can see here, Blue Blades, all right? Another manufacturer, Blue Blade. And you can see the handle is a late production. You can see that they didn't machine it as well. That's, an ex that's a sign of a late production, all right? And over here is another Bright Blade, different arsenal. Again, the markings are there. You can see the markings and you can see the, the little cheat sheet there that tells you, you know, what arsenal it is. All right. The next one is a late production. You can see here by the roughness of the handle, but it's a bright blade and uh, really good condition with Cosmoline. Around 1943, they decided to eliminate the Quillon. So you got this one right here, which is a straight guard. And it's a straight guard, and it's got a blood groove, blue finish, straight guard. Near the end of the war, things got really bad, and they started to make their scabbards out of bamboo. Okay, it's a bamboo scabbard, and you can see this really late model Japanese bayonet. Uh, no fuller, no quill on, and you can see the handle is straight. It doesn't have that little gripping surface, all right? And next to it is a field knife that some American GI must have had a lot of fun with. I keep it around as a novelty. It's got ED or ED carved into the handle. You can see they made it into a shorter buoy blade. They somehow knew how to use metal work. They twisted the quillon back over itself. They made prongs out of the, bayon uh, the bayonet locking hole and made it into a combat knife. Now over here, some nice information for you. These are the different manufacturer codes for bayonets should you get your hands on a Japanese bayonet. This is the codes that can tell you who made it. All right. And you can have up to 47, 47 different Japanese bayonets if the spirit moves you. And here's the 47 bayonets you could have. And there might be more. This, that's from an old book on Japanese rifles and bayonets. And um, you can see there the different um, manufacturers. Uh, straight blade, no fuller, bright blade, quillon, all the variations. So you could have 47 different Japanese bayonets. The one thing that's amazing about the Japanese bayonets is from 1897 to 1945, they all fit all Japanese rifles. I have never had a problem with putting a Japanese bayonet on a Japanese rifle. They don't have to be hand fitted or anything else. They're just made to that tolerance. And the Japanese, at the end of the war, when they developed their last ditch rifles, they still had a bayonet lug. The bayonet was a critical part of their culture and their military ethos. Now over here, I'm gonna show you something that's difficult to find. That's the frog, the thing for holding the scabbard. 
Those are rare. Why? Because they rotted away. Finding a good 75 year old leather like this is a real challenge. Most of the time you're gonna get a Japanese bayonet in a metal scabbard and that's it. Uh, there's leather and there's also, they use a rubberized canvas, but that rubberized canvas also tended to harden and then crinkle and then crack and then turn to dust. So if you can find a Japanese bayonet with the frog, that's a, quite an accomplishment. That improves its value dramatically, all right? And this is, I said, it's a nice bayonet, metal scabbard, and the frog. And if you, again, if you're interested in Japanese rifle collecting, uh, it's a good hobby. It's not as expensive as collecting rifles. Also, it's less legal hassle in most jurisdictions if you just collect bayonets. And ASP viewers, we hope to have more videos on bayonets, particularly ones eventually on British bayonets. And again, ASP viewers, I hope you check like and check subscribe so we can keep you up to date on other videos dealing with uh, military subjects. So this is Stan saying, take care, keep collecting.